prevent your life from failing When you wake up each day Are you able to say This is what I was born to do And if it's not, are you willing To do whatever it takes Leave your comfortable place and take a leap of faith. Oh, take a leap of faith. Oh, take a leap of faith. You're one of a kind. No one else who can do what you do. This seems like what you're called to do. Don't be blind. I pray you open your eyes. May your heart realize all it takes is faith. Take a leap of faith. Oh, 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 take a leap of faith. Oh, 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 take a leap of faith. Oh, 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 take a day are you able to say this is what I was born to do if it's not are you willing to do whatever it takes leave your comfortable place take a leap of faith
presence where glory resides. In his presence where glory resides. Join the feast where the table is spread. Join the feast where the table is spread. Good morning, new home. Uh, good morning, the shepherd's house. <laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning. To my shepherd house family, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. This, I'm Minister Brian Brown, and on behalf of my pastor, R. Kevin Matthews, and my first, uh, uh, first lady, Melissa Matthews, we give you praise and glory from the Shepherd's House family. And we are basically here to, to praise you and give you glory this morning uh, on this day, on this Sunday. All right. I'm going to ask my social media family if they would help us out to like and to share and subscribe to our social media outlets. So if you could basically like, share, and subscribe to our social media outlets, we'll be uh, letting others know that we are live and ready to worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. At this time, let us read our scripture reading. It's coming from Psalms 34, verses 1 through 8. That's Psalms 34, 1 through 8. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast unto the Lord, and, be, and the humble shall hear it of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked upon, uh, unto him and were radiant. 
and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the, and the Lord heard him and saved him from all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about those who fear the Lord and deliver them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. May the Lord add a blessing for his already blessed word. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We come lifting you up, God, because you are the author and finisher of our faith. We ask, God, in the name of Jesus that you have your way on this service today, God. Lord, because you are creator, king, and Lord, God. You are awesome ruler, God. You are mighty, God. And you're everlasting father. Father, as we come this morning, God, we ask that you have your way in the service, God. That you touch the word, God, from Pastor Matthews, God, and let it go out and come back not void, God. But do what it said it would do, God. That it would deliver, break strongholds and deliver all your people, God. I pray in the name of Jesus that you have way, Lord, as we praise you and glorify your name. Lord, let your anointing rain down upon us, God. So that the spirit may, that each of us may feel his spirit, God. Ask that you cover us in your blood, God. Forgive us for all of our sins and create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit in us. God, as you, Lord, have your way in this service, God, I pray that you magnify your name, that you be exalted, that you be lifted up because you are the almighty and everlasting father. God, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you move like never before. And that we may be able to hear your word, seek your word, and do that which you've called us to do in the name of Jesus. That we will become kingdom men and women. That you may get all the glory, honor, and praise in all that we say and do. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen, amen, amen. You're in the hands of our praise team. Come on, give us the Lord this morning. Come on, clap your hands on you people. Shout out to the Lord with a voice of triumph. Father, we've come to bless you this morning.
what you see, I can't stop praising. I can't stop dancing. Because the Lord has been so good, so good, so good, so good. Come on, stretch those hands for heaven. Come on, open up your mouth and give the Lord glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. With my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise. With a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, oh. With my hands lifted up. And my mouth filled with praise With the heart of God, I will bless thee, oh Come on, y'all help me say With my hands lifted up
God's life giving. Because He's done so many wonderful things for us. That's why my hands are lifted up. That's why my mouth is filled with praise. Because He's done so many, so many, so many wonderful things. With the heart of thanksgiving. Come on, lift your hands. Say, with the heart of thanksgiving. Lord, you've been so good. Lord, you've been so kind. You picked me up, Lord. And you turned me around. Minister Tony to pray over the bread and Minister Leo to pray over the wine. The 
the scriptures read this wise when the hour had come he sat down and the twelve apostles with him then he said to them with fervent desire I desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer for I say to you I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, this divide among yourself. For I say to you, I would not drink of the fruit of the vine until the coming of the kingdom of God. Then he took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to them saying this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me likewise he also took the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you Today, as we prepare to partake of the Lord's table, let us be mindful. Let us be grateful of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord. Let us be mindful of the fact that we have a king that is soon to return for a bride without spot or wrinkle. And ask the, at this moment before we pray, you take a moment to examine yourself. You will allow the Holy Spirit to shine his light upon your heart and upon your thoughts. And if there is an area that you need to repent or ask God to cleanse and wash you, that you take that moment right now and you ask for the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus Christ. The scripture says that when we confess our sins, that he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. If we say we have no sin, we lie. And the truth is not in us. So let us examine ourselves and and allow the light of his word not just shine light but to purge to cleanse to wash he said as far as the east is from the west he's removed our transgressions for us and today when we confess our sin we stand clean and cleansed before him the broken of your body as it already been declared this morning we say thank you Lord God you said in your word that this bread represents life the life of your son Jesus who died on the cross for our sins so Father God as we lift this bread up to you this morning we pray Lord God you're not only your blessings over it But as we partake of it, Lord God, this is the healing bread that atones our sins, Lord, and sends our relationship right with the Father. And for that, we say thank you. So as we partake of this bread, Lord God, let it be recorded in heaven that we have right relationship with you because we have confessed our sins before you. And we ask, Lord God, that you will have your way in our lives. So, Lord God, as we eat together, let your healing power flow through us like never before. Let's eat together, children. As we get 
the blood. Father, we thank you for the efficacy of your blood. For when the blood of both goats and bullocks would not satisfy, it was your blood that redeemed us. It's your blood that saved us. It's your blood that sanctified us and separated us as a people. We who were not a people became a people because of your blood. God, we thank you now for the blood. For when the children of Israel applied the blood to the doorpost, it was a deaf angel that passed over. And so, God, we thank you now that your redeeming blood has given us life, and that life is more abundantly. And so, God, we bless you this morning for the privilege to partake of your blood. We bless you now for what you're going to do in the lives of your people. And what God, you said in your word that this is the confidence that we have in you, that if we ask anything according to your will, that you hear us. And so, God, we ask that you would move in this service as we do this in remembrance of you, your death, your burial, your resurrection, how you came through 40 and two generations. When there was not a body, a body had to be prepared for us. And God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you now for coming down from heaven's throne and God tabernacling with us. We bless you now for how you died on the cross and how your body was beat. For every strike now we're healed by the blood of Jesus. And God, we bless you now in the name of Jesus. We pray as we do this in remembrance of you, let us now take of the Lord's body.
Church, good morning to everyone. Those in person online, we praise God for his presence that is in our midst on today. Can we just give the Lord another ovation? Perhaps this morning you may have come to worship with us and this is your very first time, uh, whether you are in person or online. If that is you, uh, and this is your first time, please slip your hand up so that we can greet you this morning. Anyone that may be here for the first time, anyone here for the first time, I don't want to miss nobody. Okay. Uh, okay, it looks like I haven't. Uh, if you're watching us and this is your first time, you can just indicate it by putting it into the chat. But since we are family here on today, God bless you all. Why don't you turn, change your position to the person left, right, front, or behind you. Bless somebody real good. To those of you that are in the building and have the ability, or for those of you that are watching us at home, please make sure that you hit that like button, you hit that share button. You subscribe if you happen to on any of our social media platforms. For those of you at home,
it, because it's the first of the month and that means it's time to celebrate the March birthdays. If you're having a birthday this month, happy birthday. And we're also gonna celebrate that March anniversaries. We're celebrating with y'all all month long. What's up, Shepherd's House family? It's Minister Email. And our next new members class will be Sunday, March the 17th, immediately following service. Sign up by emailing newmembers.tshicc at gmail.com. The ministry team will send you the information for the class, and we hope to see you there. Save the date, young adults. Brunch in the Barn Part 2 is back Sunday, March the 5th. Palm Sunday is March the 24th. Melvin Crispell will be our musical guest, and the drama ministry will present No Fear. We've got another Good Friday double feature. Join Pastor Kevin at Greater Mount Calvary's Seven Last Sayings of Jesus Service. It's located at 610 Rhode Island Avenue, Northeast DC at 12 noon. Make sure you're there. Then that night, meet us here at 7 p.m. for a Good Friday evening of worship. Resurrection Sunday is March the 31st. Dynamic Moves will be with us and Beverly Crawford will be our special guest. You know, Pastor is gonna have a fire word for us. Be there. Save these dates for the four week weight loss challenge from April 7th to May 5th. The fitness seminar on May 4th, then an eight week challenge from May 7th to June 6th. The challenges will have cash prizes for men and women. On Sunday, April the 28th, we are taking over all 48 lanes of Crofton Bowling Alley. $20 for shoes and three games, $1,200 for the first place team, $800 for the second place, and $400 for the third place team. May 17th through the 19th is our first ever women's conference. Bishop Jackie McCullough will be our special speaker on Friday night, and Pastor and the team are in the process of planning an outstanding weekend for the ladies. Y'all better sign up. I want to thank my brother Jimbo and Emil, Minister Emil, for helping with these announcements. God bless. Peace. Hello, my name is Pastor Kevin Matthews, and I'm a senior pastor of the Shepherd's House International Christian Church, and I want to invite you to come worship with us every Sunday morning at 9 a.m., whether in person or virtually. I hope to see you soon. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let's give God another hand of praise for all. Uh, I want to say to uh, the church family, if you haven't already, uh, please do uh, me uh, do do me a favor and make sure that you fill out our, our building survey. Uh, that is, I need to hear from everyone, not so much from a household as I'm looking uh, for every individual that will again go back. It is still posted in Realm. Uh, they still have, I believe, the uh, QR code available. Go back and check your uh, emails uh, and please. And if for any reason uh, we don't have your correct uh, contact information, uh, this month we are going to be doing our uh, membership update uh, so that we can make sure that we have all of your correct information uh, in uh, the system. Uh, some of you may have opted out of uh, our email blast or opted out of receiving text messages. Um, we try our best not to bombard you, uh, but it's important that you have that so when information does go out that you are aware uh, and that you get the information firsthand uh, so that you'll know what exactly is going on. Also, uh, this month as well, starting next Sunday, uh, we're going to be taking headshots. Uh, we want to populate realm with all of our, our pictures posted in there. And so... Um, any Sunday in the month of March, uh, please make sure that you uh, uh, 
go out in the lobby area, pick the Sunday that you want uh, to. Uh, we don't want everybody on all one Sunday. We may have to go into April, but if we can get it all done this month, uh, that would greatly appreciate it. And that goes for those of you uh, that are online as well. So you're going to have to come in here at least one Sunday and worship with us in person. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. There's so many uh, that are online. And so we praise God. We praise God for our online family. Let's give God praise for them. Uh, um, there's so much. Uh, I was supposed to send it out this week, uh, but didn't get an opportunity. Uh, but I want you to be aware. Uh, I want a correction as well. Uh, and that's my fault, Minister Jamo. The health and wellness seminar is going to be on May the 4th instead of April the 27th. It is May the 4th instead of April the 27th. And to all of our singles, uh, our singles are having a, they're going to have a wonderful uh, game night on March the 23rd from 6 to 9. Uh, from 6 to 9. And so uh, we want you to go out in the lobby. Uh, and let us know that you're coming because this is a free event. Uh, they're going to have some wonderful food um, at there as well. So we want to make sure that we are prepared uh, for those of you uh, that want to come and be a part. So please make sure uh, you step out and sign up so that we are prepared uh, for with enough food for everybody. Uh, tell somebody as well. Invite a friend, put their name down so that we are prepared as well. And then our young adults are having brunch in the bar on Sunday, May the 5th. Uh, that's going to be another great time as well. And so they're going to need you to register for that. Uh, to all of our parents and grandparents uh, that you have children, uh, this coming Saturday, our tutorial ministry is going to uh, getting them ready. Uh, for math and reading uh, for the testing that's coming up so please sign them up uh, this, this let me tell you something this is a free uh, tutorial uh, and, and so this will be a blessing to your kids we want to make sure that our kids are on the right track uh, and so please make sure that you sign them up for that and I'm truly excited about what all that we have planned and prepared uh, over the next three months, there's so much uh, that we have laid out. Uh, and then I want to make this uh, as well. A cancer care ministry uh, is going to be doing a reception on uh, April the 14th. And so we're going to be hearing more about that. But this month we got Palm Sunday. Uh, Drama ministry is going to be putting on uh, a brand new production, No Fear. Uh, again, and Melvin Crispell is going to be with us. And then Resurrection Sunday, uh, again, we're going to have uh, none other uh, than Beverly Crawford is going to be with us. And it's going to be just a wonderful, wonderful time uh, in the presence of the Lord. It's time now to receive our tithes and offerings before. Come on, let's bless the Lord. Uh, the tithe is holy. It is the Lord. We do not teach. Uh, in any way that we bring it out of duty, habit, ritual, or uh, using any form of manipulation or guilt, but we bring it in faith uh, because we know that God truly is the possessor of heaven and earth. And we honor God uh, with the tenth uh, because he trusts us with the ninety that we will be good stewards and good managers of, of that. Uh, how many know that it is the Lord who wakes you up every morning? It is the Lord who strengthens you. It is the Lord who clothes you in your right mind. Oh, somebody need to give God praise for that. So we want to again recognize uh, what the Lord is doing and as you're preparing today whether uh however way you give whether uh electronically or by envelope uh we still want to hold up in prayer minister bj uh mother she's in re rehab and also deacon donald ellington uh he went down to alabama to be uh, with his dad and we want to hold him up he's watching online 
uh, Stalin, God bless you. We also want to, I want to thank you, uh, the pastoral care team, uh, for praying uh, for my cousin Michael. Uh, we were uh, told that uh, he went into the hospital and initially they thought that they were going to be able to put, he lost a, a considerable amount of weight uh, and they were going to put a feeding tube in uh, his side to help again build his strength up. Uh, initially they were going to do it, I believe on Thursday, uh, Wednesday, Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, and then they were unable to do it. Uh, then we had another series of doctors that said that they were uh, going to try to do it, and they said they couldn't do it. And then another set of doctors came in and looked and said that, uh, that it might be too dangerous to do. Uh, then uh, as the saints began to pray, the a fourth doctor, a set of doctors came in and said, now, what, the, what they told you is true, but uh, it is somewhat dangerous, but we feel as if that we can do it, and he had the surgery on yesterday. Uh, they're, they're watching us online. He's going to be in the hospital a few days, but we thank God that the Lord will give him strength. And I want to thank uh, you. I want to thank the pastoral care team for calling uh, my cousin uh, Bernice's wife and uh, praying with her, standing with her. Uh, so many of the ministers reached out and did, and so many of them, I want to thank you so much. Uh, sometimes um, uh, I'm not able to get to people as quickly as I like, um, but I thank God that we have people that will stand in the gap and begin to pray and uphold. And so I so appreciate, not just for my family, but for you as well. Uh, just know that uh, there's a group of people that are praying for you. Um, there is a, even a, 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 a remnant uh, that is taking the first uh, three days of the month and really taking time to spend it in a time of prayer and fasting on behalf of this church family, on behalf of our nation and all that is going on so we want to continue to hold up up in prayer but we we want to continue to pray for uh, uh my cousin mike uh anthony as well uh he he had his hip replaced but he's doing well we want to continue to hold up kizzy pratt and uh, i see sister evans is in service praise god and we praise god uh, and then uh who's sister pat perry uh uh, the Lord is still touching her body. Uh, she celebrated this past week her 75th birthday. We were able to celebrate with her, uh, me and First Lady, and so we were just, again, grateful to see how God is, again, restoring her body. Uh, we want to hold up Deacon uh, Fran Moore and also uh, Deacon Jackie uh, Pearsall as well. And uh, Devon Russell, uh, who is uh, Minister uh, Sutton, Francine Sutton's son, uh, he needs, again, the prayers of this ministry uh, as, again, uh, the cancer that he had that was in remission has come back. And so we want to pray that God will give uh, him strength uh, in this particular way. And then uh, my cousin Beverly, her daughter, is being deployed. Uh, and so she, they had to rush, I believe, to Alaska, because uh, that's where she lives, uh, before her deployment. Uh, and then they're requesting prayer as well. And we know that, how, how many know that prayer still changes things? To all those that are still, again, uh, bro Brother Brian uh, Robinson, you know, we're praying him as well. If you're ready to bring your tithes and the offerings before the Lord, God loves a cheerful giver. He doesn't somewhat look at, uh, he doesn't want us to look like the book of Lamentation where we're weeping, but there should be a joy that's within our heart. And there should be an expectation within our spirit that God is going to move in an unprecedented way 
as we give to him as we bring our tithes to him i want you to lift up whether you're at home or whether you're in the building your offering envelope or your electronic device there's multiple ways for you to give here but be faithful in the bringing your tithes and giving your offerings even if you have fallen short this is a matter of trust it's a matter of confidence that we have in him uh, just ask god to cleanse you and, and he will and then start today father we thank you that you are jehovah we thank you father that when you started the clock in genesis 2 and 4 that you revealed yourself as jehovah elohim all that you did in eternity past from genesis 1 1 to genesis 2 and 3 you did it as the creator but as soon as you started the clock i thank you that when man opened his eyes in genesis chapter 2 verse number 7 he saw not only his creator but he saw his redeemer and so lord we give you praise right now because you knew what we were going to do before we even did it and you provided a sacrifice for you are the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world and lord we are forever grateful for what you have done for us now father i release the prayers of this ministry upon those who are sick those who are afflicted those who are diseased and i thank you that the name of jesus still has power and so we bind every infirmity and every sickness now and we thank you oh god as we release your anointing in every situation to destroy the yoke of the enemy and we declare the freedom of christ now in jesus name that god that you will be glorified and exalted in every situation so lord we praise you for healing and deliverance because you sent your word and healed us and rescued us from the grave and so we thank you for your power now now father as we lift up our tithes and our offerings before thee we recognize that you are the possessor of heaven and earth we recognize that you're the captain of our soul and we honor you because we are in covenant relationship with thee and so lord i pray the blessing of the lord upon your people now in the name of jesus christ do only that which you can do do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or even think multiply the seed that is sown today cause increase to come to your people we thank you for prosperity wealth riches and your blessing we thank you oh god for favor resting upon your people we will forever give you the praise right now in Jesus name that everybody say amen and amen God bless you the ushers are going to serve you for those of you at home again give electronically the worship team is going to come and continue our worship as we prepare our hearts for the word I can already tell Bishop going to preach today I can tell already amen also, we didn't include this on the uh, announcements, but we want to remind you, church family, that next Sunday is Daylight Savings Time. So, yes, you are going to lose an hour, but make sure you're in church on time. Praise the Lord. But you gain sunlight. It's not going to get dark at 2 p.m. now. Amen.
Well, you just stand When there's nothing left to do You just stand Watch the Lord see you through After you've done all you can You just stand Tell me, how do you deal with the shame? And how can you smile when your heart has been broken and filled with pain, filled with pain? What do you give when you give in your own? And it seems like you can't make it through. Well, you just stand when there's nothing left to do. You just stand. Watch the Lord see you through. Yes, after you've done all you can, you just stand and be sure and be not entangled in that bondage again. You die. 
Say, neighbor, better days are coming. If you didn't find somebody to have some faith, find somebody else and tell them better days are coming. Father, we ask now that you would grace us with your anointing. Lord, I recognize every time I mount this pulpit that I can't do anything apart from you and so Lord I ask now for a fresh wind of your spirit to come into this place we thank you for it now and in Jesus name that everybody say amen you may receive the presence of the Lord to all those who are born in the month of March we want to celebrate you if your birthday is this month come on stand to your feet let me see all my March babies. Come on now. Come on now. Wonderful. And to all those that are celebrating anniversaries this month as well. Come on, if this is your anniversary month, come on. All right, all right, all right, all right. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord, the name of the Lord. Lean to somebody, tell them better days are coming. The enemies of God's people heard the miracle of the Jordan River and how the people of God has crossed over at this point in the text and they were terrified so much so that the word of God declares that their heart melted within them this is a wonderful wonderful scene um, and if it's read too quickly or without discerning eyes, you will miss uh, what the Holy Spirit is actually showing us because this is a picture of grace. And it is literally showing us that when God works, the word gets out. It is God's grace, or so it is the grace of God that enables us to live victoriously, which enables us to face our trials and testings and go through them just as the chosen children of Israel went through them. And us having the ability to cross over uh, 
the Jordan River. Because 40 years they have wandered in a wilderness claiming the inheritance of God's promise. And it was a promise not was directly related to them, but it was an inherent promise that had been declared some 400 years earlier. It is in Genesis chapter 13, uh, verses 14 through 17, where the promise actually was originated, where God made this profound promise to Abram. And the Bible says, and he tells him to lift up his eyes and look to the place where he was to go, northward, southward, eastward, westward. And he said that in all the land which you see, he says, I have given you and your descendants. And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. And he tells them to arise and walk in the land through its length and its width. For the Lord said, I have given it to you. What is quite interesting is that if you follow the annals of scripture, the same problems, pro promise rather, was reaffirmed by God to every succeeding generation that came after Abraham. God reiterated this again in Genesis 26 and 3 to Isaac. And he tells him in the midst of a famine to dwell in this land and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants I give all these lands and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham your father. It is the same promise that we see in Genesis chapter 28 where God again affirms this promise to Jacob. And he says, behold, the Lord stands above it and says, I am the Lord, God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I give to you and your descendants also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south and in you and in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. It was given to Joseph in Genesis 50 and Joseph made this declaration to his brothers he says, I am dying, but God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land to the land of which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. God reiterated this promise again to Moses in Exodus chapter 6, and he declared, I am the Lord. And I will bring you out from under the burden of the Egyptians. I will rescue you from your bondage and I will redeem you with my outstretched arm and with great judgment. I will take you as my people and I will, may, I will be your God. And then they should know that I am the Lord your God who brought you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will bring you into this land which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and I will give it to you as an inheritance. He says, I am the Lord. These great promises from the Lord are on the verge of being fulfilled within our text. The children of Israel had survived 40 years of wandering around in the wilderness they have crossed over the jordan river 
and they are literally in our text camped in the promised land. At this juncture, they might have been tired. They might have been weary in a position to lay claim to the land that has been promised to them. And at this juncture, many things are about to change for the children of Israel because they're going to have to be able to fight a series of battles against the Canaanites for this new land that they're about to possess because this land is their home. Eventually, they will be given the inheritance and they will settle down in the land of Canaan and they will enjoy the riches of God's blessing upon their lives. But there is one major change that they are about to face that is mentioned in the text that we cannot overlook. We are told in verse number 12 that the matter will cease. As the people of God traveled through the wilderness, they were in a place where little food existed. It would have taken an enormous amount of food to feed a people that numbered some two to as much as three million people. However, in response to the need for food, the Lord moved in a supernatural way. The Bible says that he gave a substance called manna which came down from heaven early in the morning before the sun rose. In the morning, all of the children of Israel had to do was to walk outside of their tent and gather the manna and they had enough food that will carry them throughout the day. God gave the manna and he gave the manna every day as they journeyed through the wilderness. The only exception being the Sabbath day and on that day before the Sabbath day, the Lord sent twice as much, double the amount of manna so that the people would not have to gather food on the Sabbath day. Our text tells us that the manna ceased. Uh, if you don't mind helping me preach this morning, just tell your neighbor the manna ceased. And when I read this, I, it, it raised some questions uh, because what does it mean and why is this here within this setting of the text? What does it mean to the children of Israel when... Uh, the scripture tells us at this juncture that the man is ceased. And how does this relate to us today? I want us to notice some of the characteristics of manna that is presented to us in scripture because this is quite significant when we begin to examine carefully its setting. One of the first truths that I want us to see that really needs to be unpacked or unlocked is that the manna portrays, it is a picture, it is a type of the grace of God to his people. It is literally a gift, a present that has been wrapped so wonderfully and yet presented to us so graciously. And to understand this, we need to really grasp the reason why God sent it in the first place. And in order to really understand why God sent it in the first place, we have to go back to Exodus chapter 16 where it is presented to the children of Israel. And if you don't mind 
digressing in your Bibles to the 16th chapter of the book of Exodus. I would like to put this in your hearing, but I really want you to see it as well. As the word of God reads this wise from verse 1 to verse number 4. And they journeyed from Elam, all the congregation of the children of Israel came to the wilderness of sin. wilderness of sin which is between Elam and Sidon on the 15th day of the second month after they departed from the land of Egypt the whole, the whole congregation touch your neighbor say everybody the whole congregation of children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness And the children of Israel said to them, all that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, where we sat by the pot of meat, and when we ate bread to the full. For you had brought us out into this wilderness to kill the whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, behold. I will rain bread from heaven for you and the people shall go out and gather a certain quota every day that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. Now I want to point out a few truths that are literally hidden in the substance called manna. That, that, that really we need to govern our lives by. Because I just saw something that I never saw before. That's why I stopped when, because again, I don't know, you know if you caught it, uh, but I caught it. Uh, that's why I tell my students, keep reading over and over again. Because where did the, amount of, where did the manna fall? See, if you miss that, then you, you, you're going to miss the whole point in this particular aspect. Because... The manna fell in a particular place, and the place is mentioned. The manna fell in the wilderness of sin. Okay, all right. Now, what is quite interesting is that the manna was sent now in response to the complaint the murmuring of the children of Israel against leadership. Moses and Aaron brought us out into this wilderness to kill us with hunger. They were so hungry that they wanted to go back to Egypt. Now, 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 God told Moses that he will rain bread from heaven for you. He didn't say for them. He said for you. Israel are unhappy campers at this point. They were suffering and they were suffering greatly because they had empty stomachs. They were unsatisfied in their flesh. But also, we cannot miss the fact they they had empty heads and hearts as well. 
Because in this juncture of the text, gratitude, gratefulness gave way to murmuring and complaining. Now, the chapter before, they were shouting and praising God because God annihilated their enemies. They watched the Egyptians drown in the Red Sea. And now, gratitude has given way to murmuring and complaining. Contentment has changed to criticism. Instead of focusing on the blessing of the Lord, now they want to shift blame to Moses for what has taken place as a result of the circumstances that they are currently facing. They have flipped their faith into a complaint and forgot all that the Lord has done for them up until this point. Now, I know I ain't talking about nobody up in here because y'all, we, we got some grateful folk up in here, do we? Yeah, that's about 10 of you. I'm coming down your street, so you might as well get ready. Because how, 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 how does the Lord respond? And, and, and this is the thing that got me. How does the Lord respond? And, and the greater question would be that if you was God in this setting, how would you respond? If you protected someone, if you saved someone, if you provided for all of their needs, and then they turn around and they murmur and complain and forget all that you have done for them, what would you do? Most people would say, forget you. Most of us will be hurt and angry, but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love he did not respond the same way that you and I would respond oh my goodness my goodness my goodness and here we see my goodness oh my goodness that should be words of reproof it should be words of correction it should be words of punishment. But we, what we have here is a classic example of what Paul declares to us in Romans chapter 5 verse 21. So that as sin reigns in death, even so grace reigns more through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If I look at verse number four, I see the promise of God's provision in four ways when you and I are murmuring and complaining. Number one, the Lord pities us. He looks at our murmurs and complaining and say they don't even know what they're complaining about because they've forgotten all that I have done for them up until this point. Number two, we see his provision for them because God never responded to their complaint. What he did was he override their foolishness and he provided for them anyway. Number three, we see the patience of the Lord because if it was me or you, please understand we would not be as patient with people that we have helped get out of trouble and now all of a sudden they're going to act as if they can walk up in this church and don't even speak to me. Some of you have paid some folk mortgages and rent and now they acting all cute and sedity and acting as if you ain't never done nothing for them. They up here now acting like they got a new car, new this and new that and they forgot what you have done for them. So the Lord was patient with them. Then the Lord, my goodness, number four, used this moment as a, a time to prove his, oh my goodness them for who they are God promised to rain bread from heaven to provide for the needs of his people now don't miss this because the manner 
was not a production of the earth. Please understand it was not manufactured from the ground. It was not something that grew from the ground. Man did not produce this. It was something, it was not something that the children of Israel brought with them from Egypt. But the Bible said that God caused it to come down from heaven. And what blows my mind is that the manna failed in the wilderness of sin. It is God's grace. It is his gift of grace that is being displayed right here before our eyes. That whenever God provides for us after all of our murmuring and complaining, even us forgetting all that the Lord has done for us up until this point, because we have gone through a little bit of suffering and we, we, we got a little bit of ache here and a little bit of pain there. And it doesn't look as if that the Lord is going to meet our needs. As if God has brought you this far to turn into a liar at this juncture of your life. Tell your neighbor he's not a liar. Yes, because if it was God, God could have rained down fire and brimstone. He could have rained it down to consume them because we saw that in Genesis number 19 where the, the people were so wicked that God caused fire and brimstone to fall down. And if God hates something, he's shown up hate, murmuring and complaining. But that's not all these people did because they just didn't murmur and complain. They lied too. Touch your neighbor and say, a liar gets on my nerves. They lied in verse number three because they said that when we sat by the pot of meat and when we ate bread to full, please understand there is no biblical evidence that these slaves were again treated fairly with the merciless Egyptians. There was no favorable conditions that they were under. They had to make bricks without straw. And if you're looking back at your old life and thinking your old life is better than the freedom of the grace of God that has been extended to you right now, you have allowed wickedness and unbelief to enter into your heart. Please understand that's why they said you have brought us out. Here is the other indictment. You have brought us out. Let me tell you something. There is no man who brought you out. They sitting back thinking that Moses is the one who brought deliverance. It was not the hand of Moses that brought the children of Israel out of the Egyptian bondage. It was God and God alone. And I need for every worship to know that your deliverance has been secured by the hand of almighty God to give the Lord a praise up in here it was God who brought them out it was God who said listen I'm looking for a people that will worship me I'm looking for a people that will give me glory I'm looking for a people that will lift up their voice and throw back their head and raise their hand up and say Lord I thank you for all that you've done for me Lord I thank you for how far you brought me Lord I thank you for your goodness and your mercy because if God wanted you dead he would have kept you in sin he would have kept you under the leaf of Egyptian captivity but God brought you out that you might worship and praise and give his name glory for what he's done for you and the Lord's response to their false indictment against him and his leaders was grace. grace God's sovereign unmerited unrestricted undeserved favor it was grace grace 
grace, grace, grace. And, 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 and I, I, I teach this verse, at, I mean, at least three times a year, but I never saw one word. In verse number four, and the Lord said to Moses, Behold, and the Lord said to Moses, Behold, Because I never noticed the comma. Because the word behold is declared by God to arrest our attention. It is behold. Come. You got pause for a second. Because I'm trying to get your attention. Tell your neighbor, the Lord's trying to get your attention. Yeah, he's, he's, he's trying to get your attention. He, he, because I, and, and then when I, when I searched further, I discovered that in scripture, the word behold was used by the Holy Spirit throughout the annals of scripture because the word behold is the Holy Spirit's explanation mark. And you know in grammar an explanation mark indicates strong emotions or feelings. So when God said behold it just wasn't a weak behold. No, it was behold! I'm trying to get your attention. I'm trying to get you to understand that in the midst of where you are in the wilderness of sin and then you align yourself with the environment that you find yourself in by murmuring and complaining and then lying on me. God said that my response to the false indictment that you're making against me is grace. This is grace in action because the Bible said that the Lord will rain bread from heaven for you. The rain speaks of a plentiful supply of bread from heaven for those who are murmuring and complaining and lying and saying that bringing a false indictment against God. And I don't understand the church today because if you really examine your life there should always be a praise that comes out of your spirit because all of us in this room murmur and complain and lie against God concerning the purpose and the plan for which he has for our lives but we are witnessing here the grace of God being fully manifested because God did not give them and he sure enough doesn't give us what we rightfully deserve. There should be something that rises out of us to say, Lord, thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Please understand God is trying to arrest their attention. God is trying to arrest your attention because you are sitting back and all of us at times murmur and complain concerning the journey that the Lord has brought us to. And we're looking and taking responsibility 
ability to fully examine the experience to know that everything that you have gone through has been a part of God's plan that God is never shocked by anything that you're going through he's never surprised by any issue that arises out of your life if anything he permits or allows it to happen so that more grace can be poured out in your life even when the apostle Paul prayed and asked God can you remove this messenger of Satan from my flesh the Bible said he prayed three times but it was on the third time that he heard the voice of the Lord Jesus declare to him that my grace is sufficient my strength is only made perfect when you come to a place of weakness and you're trying to understand why God is permitting these things to happen in your life can I give you an insight that you're not ready for the problem is is that you too strong that's your problem you too high minded that's your problem you got too much might that's your problem you got too much wit that's your problem you got too much education that's your problem you got too much dependency on flesh that's your problem and so God permits these unwarranted things to enter our lives that cause us to come to a place of weakness that you and I cannot figure out your education can't figure it out your money can't figure it out your timetable is all messed up everything you had planned has been knocked out of whack because God is trying to arrest your attention so that you would understand and know that my grace is only sufficient in your weakness and when you give up your right and your claim and all that you think that you are and say Lord I need you every step of every day of every moment of every decision of every circumstance that I'm facing with God I can't do it without you I can't stay on this job without you I can't stay in this marriage without you I can't work with my family without you Lord I need your grace I need your mercy I need your loving kindness I need somebody up in this place or, or those of you online that will give God a praise and cry Lord I need you because the word behold carries a tone of awe and reverence to who God is the word behold is supposed to get us to reflect on the wonder of God's might and power it is supposed to provoke us to worship him for all that he has done for us up until this point and I need somebody up in the shepherd's house that will look over their shoulder and see where the Lord has brought you from and say Lord I just want to say thank you it may not be perfect, but thank you. I don't have everything that I desire, but thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you. Because it's supposed to provoke a response of worship from the recipient of those who have received the grace of God. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm not been everything that God desires for me to be but I thank him for his grace oh yeah 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 I thank him for his grace now y'all sit down while I watch this I got 12 minutes coming. Now, this is the response that should have been provoked by the people when they murmured a pain and complained against leadership. And then 
they lied and said that they had it better in Egypt than they do right now. And then they denied that where they are is because of where the Lord has brought them. You are where you are right now because the Lord brought you there. And nothing going to change until you accept the fact that you know what, Lord, I think. See, Job's situation didn't change until he accepted the fact that it was God who brought me here. And then he began to change his attitude instead of murmuring and complaining about, Lord, after all. See, see, and this is what we do. We give God our resume of our accomplishments and all that we have done for him. And then God will say, well, where were you when I formed the heavens? When I hooved out the mountains. When I told the sea, here and no further. Where were you? Because the intent is to test us. Job's struggle was a test. And this is where God says, okay, I'm going to add a caveat to this. And he says, and the people shall go out and gather every day that I may test them. The manner that God provides serves as a test. Whether you would believe God, trust God, stand on his word, not flip-flop in your faith, but trust that the Lord would do exactly what he says. Because the manna is a type and a picture of the living word in the person of Jesus Christ and the written word which we have in the form of the Bible. Now, we have to understand that the written word points to the living word. Because Jesus said in the volume, in the volume of the book, they are them which testify of me. I know I come in the volume of the book it is written of me. So the manner was given by God himself. And the manner, watch this, is a prefigured type of the written word of God. God will use the manner as a form of a test of obedience to his word. The word of God is given to us as a test of obedience to his word. It, 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 it's, it's our spiritual food. The Bible is our spiritual food and this is how we grow uh, in our faith and in our relationship uh, with the Lord Jesus. And what we have to realize is that it has been divinely inspired by God because it came down from heaven to holy men of God. As they were moved by the Holy Spirit, they wrote as the Spirit gave utterance and it is the gift of grace that has been given to us. It is powerful to see how this truth is connected with the giving of manna. Because in the 16th verse, 
uh, uh, of the chapter, watch this, uh, uh, of Exodus 16. It says, this is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Let every man gather it according to each one's needs. One owner for each person according to the number of persons that each man take for those who are in his tent. And this is the thing that really got me. Because a conservative number, as I stated, of the children of Israel at this juncture could be anywhere between two to three million people who came out of Egypt. And only would be gathered every day for a person. So if we got about two million souls, this is equivalent to six pints that was gathered for a person. Now, this means that there will be 12 million pints or 9 million pounds that are gathered daily. Which was 4,500 tons. Which is equivalent to 10 trains each train having 30 cars and each car carrying 15 tons that was needed every day. Over 1 million tons of manna was gathered annually and we cannot forget that this took place every year for 40 years. Some gathered more, some gathered less, some more, some less. What was gathered was according to a person's need. Because equally wonderful, equally marvelous, equally uh, divine, and equally perfect is the written word of God. And some gather more, and some gather less. Could it be that some of the issues that we encounter is based upon the consumption of the word of God? Because man does not live by bread alone. It, it doesn't live, man does not live by bread alone. Me, meaning that, yet, yet you need natural substance, but if all you lean on is filling your natural belly and not understand that your spirit man needs to be full because there is a sin called gluttony. Now, y'all want to talk about homosexuality. Y'all want to talk about fornication. Y'all want to talk about murder. Y'all want to talk about lying. But don't nobody talk about gluttony. Because Paul said in, oh my goodness, Paul said in Philippians 3, he said that their God, That's the biggest idol in your life. And you don't even recognize it or see it as an idol. Because some of you respond negatively like the children of Israel when your belly is not full. Oh, come on. Don't even act all religious on me. Oh, come on. Don't. don't yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. This is the gluttony Sunday. Yeah, mm -hmm. overindulging, not pushing back the plate, lying to yourself. I don't eat that much, I only eat one time a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. 
with the same amount of time that you sit to consume food? I wonder where you'd be if you was consumed that much time in the Word. This spiritual food is his own word, both written and in the person of Jesus Christ, who is the living word of God. And, 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 and this is the response to their murmuring and complaining, their lies and their false indictment that it was man who delivered them. Now, I, I, I am not going to get into this, this lengthy passage because... Really, the context will start at the 14th all the way to the 35th verse. And there's so much that is here that can be, again, literally ministered. And I, I ministered uh, this whole passage probably four or five messages several years ago. But two points I want to bring out to you, and we're going to shut this down. And I want you to write this down. Number one, what, that, what the Bible tells us about the manna was that it was a small, round substance. As fine as a flake. And one of the things the children of Israel had to do is that they had to get the manna before the sun. Hit it, because if the sun hit it, it, it would melt. Now I want you to think about this, because the sum total of God's revealed truth it's so small that you can carry it on your phone. All that is needed for you to sustain your soul and again needed to make you wise unto salvation, to make you perfect and complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. You can download the Bible and it's contained on your phone. It, it, it's, it's a small, round substance because there are no angles, no edges, which shows that the manna is a fitting symbol of the truth of God's word because God's word is perfect. God's word is whole, it's complete. Second thing I want you to understand is that the manna had to be consumed daily. This brings out the most central point because the manna was given not to look at. It wasn't given to sit in the back seat of your car. It was given that you might eat it. Tell your neighbor it's food. It's God's provision to meet the needs of the body. In the same fashion, we have to understand that God's word is a spiritual food that is given to us in order to feed our soul. The children of Israel lived on this stuff called manna for 40 years. We talk about nearly for 1,300, 13,000 days, the children of Israel picked up the manna. They gathered the manna. They cooked the manna. They ate the manna. The Bible tells us in Numbers chapter 8, uh, 11, man, they ate so much manna. They, they, they had stir-fry manna. They had Italian manna. They, they, they had so many variations of ways of preparing. They baked it. They fried it. They cooked it. They, they boiled it. They, 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 they tried to make it appetizing. The manna was given because they were starving. And they felt as if they were starving to death in the wilderness. And the manna was given that they may live and not die. God has given us his word to sustain us as his people. And we're living in a day today, you know that only 8.6% of Christians read the Bible. Now, how in the world can you call yourself 
those of the way and don't know your Bible. I'm going to pull out this last truth. Because the only the thing that could be done with the man, and, and, and this, 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 this is the problem that we have. And this is a little small truth that's tucked away that's there because the only way they could get the manna was that they had to stoop down to pick it up. The manna fell from heaven and it fell on the ground, but they had to pick it up. So in order to pick it up, they had to get down. They had to gather it. They had to bend their knees. They had to bend their backs. And they had to get down in order to pick up the manna. The only way that you and I are going to receive from the word of God is not by our intellect, not by our opinions, not by human reasoning, not by logic. Please understand, you got to stoop down. See, he said, I have hidden these things from the wise and the prudent. Jesus said it, Matthew chapter 11. And I've only revealed them to babes. The more you think you know, the less you see. And our neglect for our understanding of truth is what blocks us from receiving the nourishment that is needed. See, you can't come to the Bible with pride. You can't come to the Bible thinking that you are adequate in your understanding of this book called truth. This is a mirror, and this mirror is going to show you you. And you keep trying to get it to show everybody else, but you can't see you. The manna is there to provide us life. And just like the Bible is there to provide us life. And without the word of God, which causes us to have believing faith, saving faith in the Savior, the manna is the thing that sustains the life of God's people. So the Bible tells us they traveled around in the wilderness for 40 years. And as they traveled around in the wilderness for 40 years, manna was given as the substance to sustain their life. And you and I are traveling this life and Jesus is my God. He is <laughs> the same thing. He is our salvation, enabling us to again journey through this life. Every person who comes to him by faith can be delivered from sin and death. The man of, watch this, provided hope for the children of Israel, but they didn't even see the hope. They ate every day. And every day the manna was a promise that tomorrow, A cup. They could lie down at night with the assurance that better days are coming. Why? Because they're not leaning to their own understanding, but in all their ways, they are acknowledging Him. And he is the one who is directing their path. They know that better days are coming. Because they are eating the word of God. And they have a full picture of how the story ends. See, see that's, that's, that's part of the problem that we have in this journey is that we don't have enough understanding of the word of the Lord to know that better days are coming. You don't even know 
that everything you're going through is a setup. And the fact that there is still life in you is a sign that something great, something wonderful, something awesome is about to break forth in your life. That's why, that's why I, 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 the, the man is ceased because better days were coming. The man gave hope in a desperate situation. But the manner was only a type of what was to come. And if you miss verse 1, you'll miss verse 4. And you won't see grace in the story. Because when the manner fell and failed in the wilderness of sin, If the manna is a type of the written word of God and a type of the living word of God, there was coming a day that the manna had to cease because another day was coming where the word of God will wrap himself up in flesh, dethrone himself of glory and come down from heaven walk among us for 33 and a half years he'll die on a rugged cross and lay there for three days but on the third day he'll get up with all power and authority in his hands the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And if he gets up for what he did, guess what? You getting up to help me preach. Tell your neighbor, better days are here. is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness I dare not trust come on church somebody give God a praise man of seas I'm finished the man of seas the Bible says on the day that the children of Israel ate from the produce of the ground after the Passover we just celebrated the Lord's table it, it was after the Passover See, the divine order of God is so sequential. It was after the Passover, they went out into the field. Now watch this. And they ate the produce of the ground. Wait a second. They just got there. And they ate the produce of the ground. They're eating from stuff they didn't plant. My God, Michelle. (laughs) 
See, y'all don't even know that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. And you're about to eat from something that you didn't even plan. We talking about vineyards that are in the time of harvest and all the children of Israel had to do was go pluck the produce of the ground and begin to eat from what they didn't plant. See, when God enemies here how he is moving in your life I told you from the very beginning that they were so terrified their hearts melted they left their harvest because of the fear of your movement in their territory and some of you trying to figure out how come there are folk around you that are terrified at the fact that you are in the space that you're in it is only an intimidation that the enemy is producing oh excuse me God is producing to move them out of the way for you to reap a harvest that you didn't even plant oh help me somebody up in here touch your neighbor say neighbor better days are here you're about to step into some stuff that you didn't even plant you're about to reap a harvest and watch this because what they ate was the produce of the ground I took the time to tell you how much food God dropped because in order to feed this number of people what everybody was eating as much as they want do you know how big the harvest field had to be to feed two million people and all you had to do was to go out and get it now extend your right hand to somebody and grab their right hand and say neighbor this is your season to go get it There's no season to go get it. See, this is where I wish I had an old apostolic church. This is your season to go get it. For eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered your heart. Go get it. Go get it. God brought the children of Israel at the beginning of the harvest, and over two million people ate, and the manna ceased. No more. It had to stop because they ate from the produce of the ground seats to stop I said you don't need this no more and it was enough food not just for that day it was enough food that lasted them until they hit the winter months now here is God who takes a people who knows nothing about farming who knows nothing about agriculture he gives a fresh download of cultivating in them the ability to produce the same thing the next year 
that they did not even plan. God is going to give you a fresh download that is going to confine those around you with a wisdom that you did not previously produce to do the thing that he's called you to do. The manna fell in the wilderness of sin. It is a picture of Christ coming down in the midst of our sin. The manna had to cease because God has to form a new picture. That's why he said, no, 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 you can't eat this no more. Because now you need to eat from the produce of the ground. Because now, in order for you to eat, you have to take a seed, plant it in the ground, wait for it to die. So the life that's in the inside of the seed will crack open and it will sprout up through the earth and rise up like a stalk. And as soon as the sunlight hits it, it will produce fruit. It is another picture of Jesus dying, who was the first fruit, who was that seed from God, who was planted in the earth, but he only stayed there three days because on the third day he rose from the grave with all power and authority in his hands. The man has to cease because we have a resurrected Savior. God doesn't want us to eat that old manna anymore. There is a new bread that has come down from heaven that when you eat of this bread, you should never hunger again. You should never hunger again. God has brought you into your enemy's territory to reap a harvest that you didn't even plant. He's going to download a fresh wisdom that you didn't have. And although you have loathed, like the children of Israel, the provision of God and said, Lord, when is this thing going to change? When is this promotion going to come? When, when is this door going to open? When is this finance going to be leave? When is this contract coming through? Lord, when is this court case going to end? Lord, when is this court case coming through? Why is it still held up? What in the world is going on? God is looking for a response from us that we are grateful for where we are and for what we have. Every day when the children of Israel picked up and ate the manna, it was a promise that a better day is coming. You are headed to a land flowing with milk and honey and you're going to a blessed place where not some of your needs but all of your needs are going to be met the Lord promised the children of Israel every time they saw the manna ate the manna that better days are coming every time you come to this book it is a reminder that better days are coming All through this message, we have looked at the man and we see it as a picture of the word of God in the Lord Jesus Christ. I am suggesting that there is one thing for us to know the Lord in his word, but there is coming a day that we cannot cling to this life so much that will not compare to the day that when we see Jesus, when we see him face to face. I am 
suggesting that when you find yourself in the land of Canaan in a place of spiritual victory and power that you change your diet from the wilderness of the flesh and that you would feast on the word of God that you would not give over to the dictates of your flesh I am suggesting that your fellowship with his word and your fellowship with him should be the thing that deepens your walk and satisfies your soul I am suggesting that those of you you need to really leave the past behind you and walk in this new day that the Lord has provided for you whether you realize it or not you're in your enemy's territory and it is a wonder a grace that we cannot again neglect there's some people under the sound of my voice you're wandering around aimlessly living far below the picture the place that Christ has called you to and Lord is calling you to a higher place there's some of you who are saved but there's little power there's little glory there's little victory in your life The Lord says, listen, I, I want you to be victorious. You're living belief beneath that which God has called you to. He wants to lead you to a place of bounty. He wants to lead you to a place of fullness, a place of blessing, a place of glory and victory. He wants to put you in a place where you're not depending the blessings of yesterday to sustain you but you will enjoy the riches that Christ has provided I thank God for yesterday I, I, I do I thank God for the glory days I thank God for the days of revival I thank God for the days of power I thank God for all that he's done and all that he will do but we need the Lord right now And here today is a truth that I don't want you to miss because when I ministered this, I skipped 11 and 12 a couple weeks ago. And I was going to move on and the Lord said, no. You, 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 you have to tell him that this is a picture of Christ in his incarnation before he came into the world that he might give life so that they can be saved. The wealth of the land speaks of the riches of Christ in his resurrection. And if we cleanse, if we, we are only cleansed from sin by his death on the cross and by his resurrection that moves us into a place of victory. We need to stop feeding off the flesh and what it wants and learn how to walk in the spiritual vision of the Lord how to come to his word and have an appetite and a deep found relationship with his son and if the Lord's been talking to you today because if you're honest about your spiritual condition then I don't want you to miss what the Lord has been saying to us because if you're lost in your sin and you need a savior if that's you right now in this situation I, I, I offer you the greatest gift that's ever given to mankind that is the gift of salvation because if you repent from your sins and believe the gospel the word of God is sure that God will save you if you come to Jesus day and allow him to show you how to live this life he will show you if you're still looking for victory do you battle daily with sin or do you battle daily in your mind and of your flesh are you still filled with 
your life and it, the diet of this world full of worldliness and wickedness and sin that is filling your heart and you say listen Lord I need the Lord to create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me if that's your condition the Lord offers his grace to you today he dropped the manna in the wilderness of sin so if you confess your sin and repent and he'll forgive you he'll restore you if you're backslidden if you're wayward I want you to know there's no condemnation for those of us who are in Christ Jesus he is still cleansed you if you're distancing your walk in your relationship with everyone standing every head bowed every eye closed this is your moment to do business with God right here God is drawing you closer to him And so if you're in here under the sound of my voice, I'm going to ask you in a moment to come down this center aisle. Pass beyond everyone that may be in your room, bringing all of your belongings with you. And come down this center aisle because we want to pray with you. If you need Jesus to be the Lord of your life, if you've never confessed him as your savior, if you're in the backslidden state, if you need prayer today because you're wrestling in your mind or in your flesh or in your heart and you're saying, listen, I, I need help today. I don't care how many times you came down to this altar. The altar is a place of exchange. And we won't condemn you, neither will the Lord condemn you. But we will pray your strength in the Lord. That the abundance of his grace may be applied to your life. If you hear under the sound of my voice and you've been coming, this may not be your first, second, or third time, but you've been coming and you, you sense by the Spirit of God that this is where you to be planted, that you might grow in grace and you have not officially gone through membership class. You have never come to the altar to say, listen, I want to be connected to this ministry. If that's you today, under the sound of my voice, I want you to move to the center aisle and walk this way. That I may extend to you the grace of God, the mercy of God, his loving kindness. The Lord is here today to meet you at your point of need. If you need grace, if you need salvation, if you want to rededicate your life, if you need prayer, move this way move this way move this way i command you to move this way because there's liberty here there's freedom here there's grace here move this way don't stay in your seat no longer move this way move this way move this way move this way, move this way. come on church let's bless the lord come on church let's bless the lord Come on, church, let's bless the Lord. Sooner or later, it's turning my baby. It's turning around. It's turning around. It won't always be like this. The Lord will protect us. Is there someone else? I wait just a moment before we close. It'll work in your favor. It's turning around. Come on, receive this turnaround. The Lord will protect
decree and declare better days ahead of your people. Let us cling to your grace. Let us cling to your word. Let us be reminded as we search the scriptures that better days are coming. We give you praise because you have us in our enemy's territory. Now we claim it for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Turn to your neighbor left or right. Bless them real good. Brothers, if you don't mind helping us tear things down, ministers and deacons continue to minister. It won't always be like this. The Lord will perfect that concerning me. Sooner or later. Those of you watching, they put the information on the screen. If the Lord's been talking to you at home, we haven't forgotten you. Make sure you get the information on the screen. We have a number for you to call. Around for me. Around for me. For those ministers who haven't taken their pictures yet, please make sure you take your pictures. Ministers and deacons. Brothers, you don't mind helping us tear down real quick. Turning around, around for me, around for me, around for me. Turning around for me, turning around for me, around for me, around for me. We pray you enjoy that amazing word that you can watch over and over. Please don't forget to follow us on all our socials or go to our website at www.theshepherdshouseinternational.org where we are caring for people, equipping people for destiny, and preparing people for eternity. From our senior pastors, R. Kevin Matthews, and, and our first lady, Melissa Matthews, we say thank you, and we'll see you soon. God bless.